Here are four ways that swimming pool owners can make problems worse for themselves. This actually can happen pretty easily and without realizing it, and it can be pretty frustrating from the pool owner's perspective. So the first thing to think about is when you have a problem with your swimming pool, let's say you're out there swimming one day and you notice, oh, look, there's something wrong here. Some tiles fell off or the liners popped out of the track. Don't ignore that problem. That is not a problem you can ignore. That's like driving your car and all of a sudden there's like some weird noise or it's shaking around. You wouldn't just keep driving it. You would attend to that problem because it's important to do so. In a pool, it is possible to ignore that problem. And what ends up happening is you make the problem worse for yourself. What could have been a relatively minor repair often will grow into a much larger, much more expensive repair. So that's the first thing that you want to recognize as a swimming pool owner is the importance of dealing with problems in a timely fashion when you find something wrong with your pool. Uh, the next thing I'll say is kind of along the same lines, and it's in regards to water chemistry. Water chemistry can be pretty confusing, especially for new pool owners. There's a lot to know and a lot to go over, and at some point you're probably going to get get overwhelmed. You're probably going to be confused, and you may even be inclined to give up at some point. And let's say you do that. You give up, and you stop maintaining some aspect of your water chemistry. And you notice that a couple days later, like water still looks fine. And a couple weeks later, the water still looks fine. Hey, did I even really need to be doing all that stuff I was doing before? And the answer is yes. A lot of times with water chemistry, it can be a slow building issue. Like you operate your pool in a saturation index scaling state to, for too long. And now you'll start to develop scale and your heater elements, and that can reduce the service life of your heater. So yes, that's it's important to recognize that while the results might not be immediately visible to you, you must recognize that improper water chemistry in your swimming pool is the number one cause for early component failure. If you don't want your pool to cost you an arm and a leg and have all of these surprise and nightmare expenses suddenly dropped in your lap, then what you do is you properly balance your water chemistry at all times. Even if it's confusing and overwhelming at first, it gets easier over time. So just stick with it and you will be rewarded for doing so. So the next thing that I want to talk about, repair epoxy. That's that, you know, the, the epoxy that's on the, the counter of the local pool store for 20 bucks or so. And you can mix it together and fix little leaks and stuff that you have, you know, wrong with your swimming pool. Here's the problem. Almost nothing on a swimming pool should be fixed with repair epoxy. 99 times out of 100, if you're a pool owner and you buy some of that stuff attempting to solve a problem, like I got these leaky pipe fittings or you know some, something like that, or some tiles are falling off, I'm going to fix them with this repair epoxy, you effectively make the problem worse because when somebody, it's not, it's not going to resolve the problem that you have. That's the first issue. And now when somebody eventually comes along and tries to do the proper repair, well, they have to take more steps because you've gone and, and mucked everything up with this repair epoxy. And that can be especially disastrous for things like, you know, if, if you were to try to use that on, let's say, a pump intake that's leaking and you go and cover everything with repair epoxy, it doesn't solve the problem. Now you might need to replace the pump because the whole intake manifold is just covered in this stuff and it doesn't come off. And so it can be a real problem. And in general, just stay away from the repair epoxy and trying to fix things with it on your own. Seldom is that the correct course of action for your swimming pool. And so the fourth point that I'll make is that if you have a swimming pool and let's say you have a problem with it, like a leak, and you call your local pool store and you're like, hey, I've got a leak in my pool, come and deal with it. And they're like, well, we're going to be a week or two. And you're like, no, I'm losing a foot of water a day. Get over here right away. You've just made a problem where there wasn't one before. It is incredibly important to be accurate and articulate accurate information to your local pool company when you're dealing with problems with your pool because they're going to factor that into the diagnostic process of determining what's wrong with your pool. If you say you're losing a foot of water a day, holy crap, that's a big issue. And the problem is, is that you're probably not losing anywhere near to that much water. So we're going to be looking in the wrong spot. And we might have, you know, we might have actually found the leak source. And then what ends up happening is that the the 
amount of water loss that we're seeing from that leak source that we found, well, it doesn't match with the information that you gave us. This must not be it. Let's keep looking for something else. And we burn up a bunch of your money and a bunch of our time. And the reality is, is that this all could have been avoided if you just articulated accurate information instead of exaggerating a problem in order to try to get, you know, more prompt service, that kind of thing. So these are just a couple examples of ways where pool owners can inadvertently create problems or make problems worse for themselves or end up costing money for themselves that they didn't need to spend. If you found this information helpful, please be sure to like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And you can check out my website, swimmingpoolsteve.com.